Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Today we're going to have a, a rehousing of a new addition to the Beastie Room. And it's a really striking spider, but it's one that we don't see in a hobby very often. Um, this is the first time I've seen, seen any for a long time actually. And that is the Melopius albostriatum, which is the Thai zebra. Now, uh, these are a fossorial spider from Thailand, as the name suggests, and we are going to set it up in this 30 by 30 by 30 Komodo cube. Now, um, we're not going to bother with any drainage layer. We are going to go straight in for soil, and we're going to fill it right the way up. Now, these, these are pretty much a very strict fossorial spider, so... They will go right the way to the bottom of the enclosure. So we're not going to bother putting a drainage layer in there. What we can do is we can monitor the colour of the soil. And this will tell us whether we need to increase or decrease our humidity. Now, um, coming from Thailand, these guys do like it really, really warm. So we're looking at temperatures anywhere really from sort of like 70 up into the high 80s. They will tolerate it, no problem at all. And in fact, they actually really enjoy it. And they like a really good humidity as well. So we're going to try and achieve both of them goals in our setup. And it's not really that difficult to do. So what we got, we've got some moss here. We've got some moss on some bark. Um, we've got some flat carpet moss. We've got an ivy here as well, which we're going to use. And we've got this absolutely wonderful, wonderful piece of wood. Look at that. That is really cool. Now, this has um, just been collected from the wild. And as you can see, it's got its own moss and everything already on it. But if you look in here, you can see this is this is dead wood. This is absolutely solid there. It's, it's dead. And I've cut it so that I can fit it in here. And it's been cut here as well. But apart from that, we leave it as best we can, as natural as possible. Now, um, one of the things that we um, we often get asked about using the natural materials if you're using um, wood such as this uh, branches anything like that always try and find branches that and wood that's actually already dead you don't want living branches living branches will have sap running through them and this can cause problems so avoid anything that's alive if, if you see i don't know someone's pruning their tree or whatever and you like the look of some branches because there's some lichen on them or whatever don't bother because they are still alive and it's going to cause you problems so always go for dead stuff and we look in there this is dead it's bone dry this this timber here you can also go for wet timber if it's completely rotten so we're looking at stuff that's rotten right the way through to the core that again is safe to use but you want to stay away from live stuff and it's purely really because of the fact that it has sap running through it and there will be sap underneath the bark and things like that so that can in effect cause us problems later on down the line you can also suffer with mold and things like that so always try and get old used wood stuff that's completely had it right so what we're going to do we are going to Get some of our normal potting compost and we're, we're using this really to bulk it out and also as well being a potting compost there will be some nutrients within this which are actually put into it and they're not going to cause you any trouble all right Got the big old lumps there look Right, let's see what we got. So, we often get asked again with the with the potting compost that we use and things like that. There seems to be within the hobby a real confusion about what is good and what is bad for our spiders. Now, I think some of this is, is stemming from the fact that we all know that pesticides and chemicals can cause problems to us to our inverts no matter what they are they, it can cause problems but there's a world of difference between um, pesticides and fertilizers 
Fertilizers, generally, the fertilizers used in potting compost and things like that, I'm not going to cause your spiders any problems at all. We've been doing this for many, many years, and it's never been an issue, and I don't see it changing anytime soon. So have a little bit of faith. It's not that bad. I think much of the, the worry that we see within the hobby is purely down to misunderstanding what the actual problem is. So what we're going to do, we've got some more of our, our own collected beastie mix. As you can see the difference there. Now this has got leaf litter and what have you in it as well. So we can mix all of that in. Look at that, it's absolutely lovely stuff. Right, and all we do, this is just fine root stuff here. So all I normally do is I just pull that out, because it can be a little unsightly and be a bit of a pain. So we take it out. Now what we're gonna do, we're now gonna try and landscape our enclosure. Now, he says, I need to turn this around to face me because I can't see what I'm doing. Right, here we go. So what we want, I think we can go with some more soil. We're going to build that right up. There we go. That's better. And what we're looking for here is we're trying to create a bit of a backdrop and we also want to get I want to put this plant in the back corner so we're going to put that there and we're going to use some some of the potting compost in the back there And what we can do, we take our plant. Now I find um, these ivies generally are pretty good. They tend to last well. They're reasonably hardy. And they can put up with an awful amount of abuse, which is just what we need inside our enclosure. Because as we know, our spiders can be a little bit hard on things like plants. So what we do is we just tuck that in there. And we can move that in there. Throw a bit of that up. I'm just looking at doing that. Now bearing in mind we have got a fossorial spider here so there's a good chance. What we're hoping for is it's going to come down and bury down in here. This is what we like. This is what we're hoping for. It's going to come into here. Chances are it's probably just going to come in the front here. All right, how's that looking? Let's get in there. Let's get in there. All right then. What we can do is we can put some of this. We've got a piece here. Now this has actually got bark underneath it, so you can see this is already rooted onto a piece of bark. So it's been there for a long, long time. What we can do is we can tap that in there like that, and hopefully we can create almost like somewhere to hide and encourage our spider to go down in there. That's what we would like to see it do. We've got a water bowl here, so we'll put the water bowl over here because once she starts, she will soon start to dig this up and she'll make a mess of everything. So I'm gonna use some of this. Let's see what we got here. Put this in here. So what we're looking for, we're just trying to create almost like a bit of a forest floor I'll take that. I'm just going to pull off any little bits that we don't want. 
There we go. All right. So what we're going to try and hopefully she is going to go in here. That's the plan. That's what we'd like to see her do. She may just dive down behind and dig it all out. But we will have to wait and see. This is the thing. When we've got fossorial spiders, we can um, we can literally do our best to give them somewhere decent to hide and everything else. But at the end of the day, they are going to choose what they wish to choose. Now, as you can see with this, we're not looking... We don't want to give it too much depth. So as long as she can actually get down, what's going to happen is, if I turn this around to the side, we're hoping that she's going to come down into here. We've dug it out a little bit in here. So she's going to come down in here, and then eventually she'll hit the bottom, and then she'll come down the back here, and she'll go all the way along here, where it will be nice and dark, humid, it'll have everything in it. So when we take our backing board off, as you can see there, she will come down into here, and then hopefully she's going to come down through here. And this is going to be completely secluded, and this is going to give her that sort of 75, 85% humidity that this spider requires. And it will all be down in here. So all we have to do, because we've got no drainage layer, all we need to do is monitor the color of this soil. So we can look at it throughout here and we can work out whether we need more moisture or, or not. And just work it from that. It's really, really, not that difficult. It's quite simple once you get your head round where you need to be with it. So we're just going to fill up our water bowl. Our moss is already soaking wet, so we're not going to worry about that. What we are going to do is give a good bit of water into our plant here. It's important that we give these a good watering because once we take them out of the pots, it actually shocks the plant quite a lot. So what we're looking for is to try and make it as easy as possible, really. A nice transition. Right, so there we go. Let's have a look at our spider, shall we? Let's move this. Now then. Now these guys are pretty much a black spider as a base color. And then they have this absolutely gorgeous yellow markings on the legs, yellow stripes. Now, I think it might be possible if you, can you see that? Now that you can see there, this is basically when she came in, she was put in this tub and we've kept her in here just temporarily and just kept her in the dark really and let her settle down. Now you can see the markings on here are absolutely stunning and that abdomen, this is where they get the name where they're often referred to as earth tigers and it's because of this striping on the abdomen. And as you can see, she is absolutely gorgeous. Very, very pretty spider. Now. Being a fossorial spider, she is going to disappear and she's going to tuck herself away and uh, hopefully we can get her to behave like we do some of our other fossorial spiders where she will literally sit out on the mouth of her burrow and just wait for food. That's what we're hoping. But these guys are quite strictly fossorial, so we may not see much of her. Now the other thing to be aware of with these is they are, they can be quick and they can be very defensive. So we have to, you know, be aware with our fingers. They're not particularly for the faint hearted. So we do have to be a bit careful and make sure that, um, we, that we, we watch what we're doing. Now she's going to be a bit face down here. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to try and turn her. Because what we're going to, we want her to come out. And hopefully we can get a nice look of her in her new enclosure. We don't want her to disappear if we can help here. So here she comes. 
beautiful, beautiful spider. So they can be a little bit spicy. As you can see there, as often happens with these, we're asking them to move out onto a foreign um, piece of ground and they're not 100% sure about it. As you can see, we're keeping, we're maintaining contact with our paintbrush with just a little bit of pressure, just enough pressure to move, move her off. And as you can see there, she was almost off, then she was back in again. So here we go, we're going to do it again. Still no aggression, this is really, really good. Now as we get her onto the moss, we're lifting our box at the same time. And we're hoping, there we go. Look at that. So we've managed to get her off there with, with no trouble at all. Should get a really nice look at her there. And you can see the deep colouring in the, the black in the legs here. Really, really, it's like velvet, like a velvet black. A beautiful abdomen, look at that. Now looking at this girl here, looking at how vibrant her colour is, I would suggest that she's not long molted out. Now these would have been wild caught when they came in. Um, we do have another female and we also have a mature male as well. So we purchased um, three of them with the hope that we can actually breed these because the more that we can breed within captivity, the less we need to be taken from the wild. And this is what everyone's plan should be. This is what we should all be working towards, trying to, um, to secure these, the numbers of these guys inside captivity. That's what we're looking for all the time. Now she doesn't seem to be um, too keen on actually venturing out and having a little look around. And this is something that we'll often see with something like a fossorial spider because she's out in the open so she's going to hunker down and she's going to sort of like be a little bit wary of what's going on around her so she's going to be a bit careful now, as we saw there we maintain contact with a paintbrush and we just had a nice steady amount of pressure just enough to move her along without getting any aggression from her but as with a lot of these old world spiders when this happens, don't be fooled into a full sense of security and think that you've got a soppy spider because she can wake up in a flash and they can move incredibly fast and they're more than capable of looking after themselves. So just be really, really aware. If you do get away with things and like we've seen here today, we've managed to move them without any trouble, just be aware that might not last forever. So always be prepared. We have our catch cup here. Should we have gone all wrong and she'd managed to run off, we were prepared to catch her up again. Now, it would be nice to see if she would move, but I don't think she's, uh, she don't look like she's in too much of a rush. What we'll do, we'll leave her now. We're just going to leave her be, let her settle down. And hopefully in the future, we can come back and have a little recap and see what she's done with this enclosure. And, uh, and everything else and just have a look at see what it looks like in a few weeks time we'll probably do um, another room tour actually because we've got a number of our spiders that have um, redecorated and changed things around and different bits and pieces and we've got some enclosures that look really really nice when we've done them and since the spider's been in they look absolutely awful so they've been they've destroyed them so we can have a look at some of them as well so it doesn't sometimes it doesn't matter how much hard work you put in and how much effort you put in to make these things look nice sometimes a spider has a completely different idea but that's what it's all about that's, that's spider keeping all right then well i hope you enjoyed that that is the thai oh, oh she's having a little little move that is the thai zebra now um all being well, she is going to settle down. We're going to give her a few weeks. Once she gets established, we will introduce our male and see what happens. And fingers crossed, we'll get that on film and we'll have a little bit extra to show you guys. Right then. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I will see you soon, guys. <laughs>